It's that time of year, folks. It's zucchini season. For those of you who don't like zucchini, lock your doors, turn off all your lights on your porch, or put all your security cameras on so you know which neighbor is dropping off zucchini on your doorstep that you don't want. Otherwise, stay tuned. I'm gonna show you four ways to dehydrate and use zucchini that will make you have zucchini last all year long, and you won't have to start dumping this stuff at your neighbor's house. Your neighbors will thank you. Really, they will. We're gonna be doing zucchini jerky, zucchini chips, zucchini powder, shredded zucchini, diced zu zucchini, all the ways that you can use zucchini and not have to drop off stuff to your neighbors ever again. Okay, I've got my uh, zucchini soaking in some baking soda and water. Not because I think that it is some magic formula, but I kind of do it to help see if it will get off some of the wax that comes from uh, the grocery store. Okay, to do all the things that we're doing today, here are the tools that I'm going to be using. I'm gonna be using my chopper um, because this is the best thing ever for doing uh, dices um, for anything, onions, zucchini, Everything that you're gonna dice up, this is a great tool to do if you don't wanna use your knife. I'm gonna use my handy dandy shredder. I'm probably gonna use my knife. And then I'm gonna use this to do my slices for my zucchini. It's certainly not necessary. You can use a knife and just make your slices. Okay, for our slices that we're going to use some seasonings on, I am just gonna go through here and do, they're gonna be approximately a quarter inch. The thinner that you make these, the crispier they will be at the end because they just are thinner. But if you, uh, you might find also that super thin ones stick to your sheets, your trays, your mesh, whatever you're using. So I just get approximately a quarter. All right, so there you go. Perfect, little crinkle zucchinis, okay? I'm gonna do these. What you can do also when you do your chips, um, you can put them in a little I don't know if you want to put them in a baggie and then just put your seasoning inside the baggie then shake them up and then put them on here especially if you're only doing one kind of flavor you can do that but because I'm going to do a couple of different flavors I am going to just man, I did get a couple of these super thick didn't I um, I'm going to just put them on a tray do the all right now these are going to be done with my favorite this is my favorite everything but the bagel seasoning this is what I use. And I just go in here and shake some of this onto each one. You know what, I could do it a little better. Take about an eighth of a teaspoon on each one. Just shake it on here. Something cool about the crinkle cut is um, you know, without having to use any oil, the crinkle cut kind of keeps the seasonings on a little better than just having the flat, but I'm gonna show you what I usually do too. If you get a little extra on there, you know what, it doesn't matter because this tastes so good when it's done. I like my, my vegetable chips flavored pretty heavily. So what I would do after is come through here and just lightly press this into the zucchini kind of stick into that flesh a little better. If that's something that you want to do, you can try that. Okay, here's the first tray. Now the second tray for my oldest who likes things a little spicy. And why, yes, I did cut out a little extra off of another zucchini that I have for something else just to make sure I have the right number on here. Or I could have done that. Okay, I'll take this small one off and add it. Okay, he loves to use this um, seasoning. I don't know how to pronounce it. I've never heard anybody pronounce it. I've only ever seen it in print. This is the uh, seasoning he loves. It is spicy and a little lime flavored. And I was reading through some of the comments on my Facebook page this week um, about salt and, and watermelon uh, because I just did a, a video on how to dehydrate watermelon that I'll put up in the I cards above. And somebody mentioned that they put this on their watermelon. And I thought, gosh, that would be actually really great for the son of mine who loves all of the spice. Because this has a lime flavoring in it and lime on watermelon is really good. So he'd probably love this. So I'm just sprinkling this on, not super heavy, but just enough to give it some flavor. All right, there are his zucchini chips ready to go. 
um, doing chunks, what I end up doing is taking the ends off. They can also be dried and just thrown in for your zucchini powder uh, that you don't really care about the, because they will work just fine. Just chop them up a little better. You do not have to peel these if you don't want to. If you want to because you don't like the peeling on them, that's fine too. That's up to you. I just don't bother uh, because I'm fine with it just like it is. All right, so I'm going to take my chopper. And I'm going to put a section in. And there we go. Those are the dices that we're going to be using for soups and stews and casseroles uh, down the road whenever we want. It's not quite these chop up really well if you want a smaller dice uh, this this full star comes with a smaller dice like this you can also cut your larger ones into thirds and that will give you a smaller chunk even if you like the larger size dice this way but you don't want it so thick you can easily just cut your your larger zucchini in thirds So what I have here is an entire bin full of larger zucchini chunks that will work fine in soups. If you'd like them smaller, then cut that, do them a little smaller. All right, so now we get our dices out. That should fit. This is probably two large, maybe three zucchini. I don't remember. I didn't count. I'll give you a... Uh, I have a blog post already ready of um, all the different ways that you can dry zucchini to make it work for you for things. So I'm going to link it down in the description box below. It's got some other ideas such as zucchini candy, which is a way of doing zucchini to make them like little gummies that my friend Lori from Common Sense Homestead did. Um, that is always a really popular way of drying your zucchini um, and having it for snacks that are healthy. Um, I know some people use these as they dry and then they make mock um, apple uh, pieces for doing like some kind of mock apple pies and that's another way you could do it. So I've got um, that stuff down in the, in the comments, in the description box below, I've got the link to that. So some other ways to do this. So here are our dices ready to go into the dehydrator for soup, stews, and casseroles. Okay, four shreds. Now normally when you're gonna cook, you're gonna shred your zucchini and then you're gonna let it and you're gonna wring it to get rid of some of that moisture. When you're dehydrating, you don't have to do that. If you want to, you can, because you can do whatever you'd like. I just find that the little bit of time that it takes to dry, to dry uh, unsquozen, is that a word? Uh, if you just dry it like it is, it will dry. It doesn't need extra time. It doesn't need the extra work on your end on this end to make the drying process go any faster. So I'm going to take these and I'm going to do a large grape. Now, if you have a food processor or a KitchenAid uh, or even in some other tool that makes this go faster for you, use it because it's worth it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one large zucchini, separate it, do another one and separate it so that you can just see the size of what it looks like when it's finished because they shrink up a lot. So that's approximately two cups of shredded raw zucchini that could be um, squeezed because you'll see let's see you can drip it, it has a lot of moisture in it it's just really not necessary to do before you're going to dehydrate the dehydrating process will have these dried out really quickly so there's no real reason to do that all right i'm just using my bench scraper to put these out on my tray love this thing. It's so useful for cutting so much. I'm doing dough, which is what they were originally made for, but they help so much with doing kind of this kind of prep work for vegetables. I'm making such a mess. Do you make a big mess in the kitchen? Are you a clean cook or I meant like a, I shouldn't say clean because I'm not dirty. I'm just messy. And, uh, and I've not ever been one to, to be really good at keeping 
a clean, tidy counter space when I'm cooking because I just make a big mess and I'm, I embrace my mess. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna spread these out a little bit. Uh, they are gonna shrivel up like mad, but I wanna do this so that you can see how it dries and I'm gonna keep the equivalency um, done this way. Not that it matters in the end because they're gonna all go together. But this is what basically what you can do with it. Now you can spread it out as much as you can possibly spread it out and it will help them dry faster because the more surface area that you have to work with, oh, you know what, why does it matter? This was two cups, so we'll remember that. I'm not gonna bother keeping them separate. They don't need to be separate. And just spread them out the best you can on your tray. They will shrink up like crazy as they dry. So they will separate on their own. I'm really big a proponent of making sure that you've got space between all of your pieces to have proper airflow so that things dry at the appropriate time and you don't have spots where it's still wet. Except I also know that there are some foods that shrink like mad, so I am not so fussy about those. So that is two cups of freshly grated zucchini going in the dehydrator. Okay, the next thing I have here is a bowl full of, um, I would say it's about a half a cup of teriyaki sauce and about two tablespoons of water. The ratio is never important, um, depending on what your flavor is, but we're gonna make some jerky out of this zucchini. So, what you wanna do is you're going to take one half inch, one quarter inch slabs uh, to one half. I mean, Granted, the thinner the better because they dry more, more efficiently that way, but you want some good, some slabs, okay? They are going to shrink, so don't worry about that, but what you're going to do is you're going to marinate these. Now, normally, I would have these in a baggie to go for two or three hours before I do this, but because we're, we're working through the video, I didn't prepare them ahead of time, which I should have done. Some of these would be like tiny, tiny little like beef jerky, I mean, like jerky sticks, so I can marinate them this way. But what I'm going to do is I've got an extra big reusable bag in here that's about had all of its life worn out of it. So this is how it's gonna go. While I prep everything else and get it all ready, we're gonna let this marinate in the refrigerator as long as I can do before we have to get it in the machine. So here you go, just like this. Okay, the thing I am gonna warn you about doing the jerky is that this is gonna stain your trays, so, uh, or stain anything that you wanna put it on. So if you care about that sort of thing, then you're gonna to wanna to put this on parchment paper that can be thrown away. I don't care so much because I've got some, some of these sheets that are stained from whatever they're doing uh, that I just know that's what life is. I don't care that my, all my sheets stay clean. I just keep a few to keep clean for, um, for photos and stuff. But real life means that your prep materials do not, um, do not stay perfect forever. Okay, now these have not marinated anywhere near long enough but I don't have time. And I'm gonna go ahead and just lay them out. I'm gonna do skin side down wherever possible. These are gonna shrink, some of these are gonna shrink up to be really tiny, like uh, Slim Jim kind of things. Uh, and they're gonna be intense with flavor of this teriyaki sauce. I wish I had more time, but I don't. So still, it'll be, it'll be a fun treat to come back to after. Okay, so this is what your teriyaki jerky will look like when you're getting ready to dry it. You're gonna to wanna to on um, a fruit leather sheet of some kind, parchment paper fruit leather that you don't care about getting stained. There you go. Into the dehydrator, we move. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm prepping up a bunch of pieces of zucchini chunks to go into my food processor. Now the reason I'm doing this is that I'm gonna make zucchini flour. Uh, ultimately, that's what this is going for. And zucchini flour can be used as a replacement in your 
baking recipes with about one half cup of zucchini flour replacing one half cup of flour. Uh, you can choose whether or not you're gonna do all of it or just part of it or whatever. Um, I'm gonna just stop here. Um, I have a friend, her name is Victoria and she runs a Modern Homestead blog. Um, she is the queen, oh, it would help if I get this right. She is the queen of using alternative flowers to use for baking and cooking because of her family uh, needing something a little different. So I am, this is all for her, okay? So I'm gonna leave a link down to her uh, web post, um, her blog post down in the description box below that teaches you how to use flour this way in recipes. She's got a really awesome gluten-free uh, chocolate cake that she uses with squash powder um, that you'll love if you are keto friendly, if you are uh, need to be gluten-free, etc. So here's how I do it. She has a different way of doing it, but for me, uh, just making this flour I use as part of my vegetable flour, I mean, my vegetable powder uh, that I put in everything because uh, it works that way too. Um, but I just wanna let you know that there are ways to use this to replace your regular flour in baking. So here's how I'm gonna do this. I'm just gonna do some rough chopping. <laughs> And for doing this flour um, or this powder, whichever way you want to call it, whichever way you plan on using it, I could have just sat and shredded all of this, but this works so much faster. Uh, and you can do this if you want to do this in place of shreds when you're doing a recipe that you're trying to do some zucchini, you know, some zucchini bread or zucchini muffins that calls for a lot of shredded. You can just do it in chunks like this too. It doesn't have to be an exact shred. So let me get the next batch going. Now, to go on my trays, I am going to just lay this out. I am not measuring because right now I just don't need to. Uh, I'll have the equivalency, equivalent, equivalency chart. I also know that approximately one cup of fresh equals one quarter cup of dried equals about a tablespoon of powder when you're wanting to add it into a recipe. That works, that's your equivalency so that you know about what you're replacing things with. Okay, so to finish all of this off, I'm pulling out the Nesco. I wish that I could get the Excalibur out because it would have given me uh, more room, but we just haven't figured out a way to put it into my drying space. Um, that doesn't require building a platform yet, and if ha I have it out right here, it's so noisy within our family, um, and we do everything right, kind of together right here, that it's just too noisy. So I broke out the Nesco. So as I'm gonna, I'm just gonna pour this onto the sheets. And, and then just spread it all out. Now I had planned on having the most abundant garden this year and having so many zucchini to make as much powder as I could for a whole year. And plans did not work out that way with weather and being gone for an extended time with a, a medical emergency with my family. So um, I am not going to be able to get as much of this done for storage as I had hoped. Because you know what? Zucchini is still really expensive in the grocery store. It's ridiculous how expensive it is considering how prolific those things grow. Um, and I know no one who's growing zucchini around me. I have a friend who has a farmer's market business uh, and a farm and she offered me yesterday she was like I wish we lived closer I've got this stuff out, growing out of my eyeballs I could have given you so much when she heard that I bought extra for doing this but this will be enough just to add to my stuff now here's the coolest thing those of you who haven't followed me before this is a great uh, hack to do your Nesco trays that you can still use this space here it still gets airflow like it needs I just bought some generic um, mesh for dehydrators that are 14 by 14 and then I cut them down into a circle and I can just sit here and do this all I want and not have to worry about those holes that the Nesco has for its sheets. So put as much of this as I can. Ah, see, I told you I'm just messy. This gives me a little bit more surface area to work with and I can pile a little bit more on. Spread this out. I'll take a little bit of this off and add one more tray.
Okay, so that you can see what we have going on here. Zucchini bits for powder. Two trays of flavored zucchini. One tray of zucchini dices. One tray of zucchini jerky. One tray of um, shredded zucchini. Now you could do zoodles on here, but that would work too. Um, then, you know, any shape will work, uh, depending on how you want to put it into a meal. Then we have three trays in this Nesco of zucchini shred, I mean, the zucchini bits like this. And on this fourth tray right here, I didn't show you, I put one of the solid sheets of, uh, for fruit leathers for Nesco in there so that it would catch anything that might fall through that one tray that has the hole in it and it has the holes on the sides. So just in case there's anything falling through. So here we go. They are all going to be done at, when I get this plugged in, it'll turn on. So I'm not gonna plug it in while we're talking. We're gonna dry this all at 125. You can certainly dry this lower if you'd like, if you prefer to keep something that keeps more of its nutrients but we're going for a mix of nutrients and efficient drying. So we're going to 125. The time is gonna be set to run as long as it goes because it just doesn't matter. Um, I don't ever use that timer for anything other than going, oh, it went off, I need to reset it. So this will take approximately five to 10 hours. It just depends on your machine, how much humidity is in your zucchini, um, the thickness that you cut things. Uh, it will all dry at different times. So during this time, I'll go ahead and pull it out. But what I, but I mean, I'll go ahead and pull it out and show you, but I'm just gonna leave everything in there until it's all dry because you want good and dry produce when you're putting it away for storage. Okay, we are at the six or seven hour mark. I didn't double check my time. These crumbles are probably done. Um, I'm going to leave them in there because they won't be hurt to stay in. Um, it's not going to do anything to them at all. Uh, the chips are still probably four or five hours away. Some of them are getting small and ready to get it there in, but then we've got some th thicker ones in here too. So this is why it's important to keep your, um, your uh, slices at about the one quarter mark that makes the best chip. There are our everything bagel seasoning they still have a while to go here are our dices and as you can you, you may not be able to tell these are starting to shrivel um, they still look like they're not you know you're looking at it looking like they're not done at all but I can tell how they have definitely started to shrivel down so they will take they will take longer than if I then if I had uh, peeled them but we're fine with them just like this. So we're just gonna keep going and let them have all the time they need to dry, which will probably be overnight for them. And then here's what the jerky is looking like at this point. You know, it's not pretty, but it's gonna taste really good later. And then our last tray of the, uh, these are the shredded and these are dry. Okay, let start up again okay so let's start off with results I'm gonna be open with you about what happened um, by the time that I went to bed last night my chips still weren't done so I just set the machine at 95 and I just let it run overnight then I had a couple of meetings this morning that made it to where I couldn't get to this immediately so that's the thing about dehydrating is if you just turn your machine down just let it go most of everything that you're going to make except for fruit leathers or jerky really can't be over dried especially if you're putting it away for storage so i just let it go while i knew that i couldn't get to it um, so the results this morning are from just under 24 hours of drying but they certainly didn't need this so this is your uh the mints that i made of all of my zucchini this will be made into a powder in a little bit all right this is my shreds this is what your shredded zucchini would look like so when you're ready to use this in any kind of muffin, or if you wanna put it into cooking, you can rehydrate this first if you want, or you can just throw it in if it's not the main source of substance in your muffin. So if you're making zucchini muffins and you have a bunch of this shredded, you're gonna to wanna to rehydrate it, then kind of uh, do the same squeeze most of the juice out because you want it to be like it was fresh when you're making it that way because it's part of the bulk of the muffin. Now, if you're just adding this to the muffin because you wanna add some zucchini, you can do it like this. Add about a tablespoon of extra water for every cup of zucchini that you're putting in and 
that should handle um, the added moisture needed to rehydrate your shreds. But this is basically what your shreds look like. Now, if I had wanted to, I could have gone through and just um, made sure that I kind of separated them out a little bit more. But even just this little bit right there, they'll break up pretty easily and you'll have small shreds. Now, here's our jerky. If I, like I said yesterday, if I had, had uh, taken this skin off, if I had peeled these, they wouldn't have shriveled up so much. And what we're looking at is a leathery consistency because of the, the sugars and the jerky. Um, and these are uh, certainly good. <laughs> um, these are really good. Uh, they've been in for 24 hours. They should be dry. You know what? Give them a minute to uh, cool off. We'll see what they're like because I just pulled everything out. But the sugars and the jerky are going to make it not do as well as if you just put them in to dry without it. it still makes them kind of soft. Oh man, that's good though. Okay, here are our chunks. So they're dry. They are ready to go. And you can store these in an airtight container um, and you know go through your conditioning phase of letting them sit for a week, shake the jar up every day to make sure they're not sticking to each other or sticking to the sides of the jar or that you're not seeing any kind of moisture that's within a jar. Uh, and then put them into the jar you plan on storing them. And then when you're ready to make soup, you wanna put a handful of these into your soup, let them simmer for a while because they need to rehydrate first, then they still need time to cook. They're ready to go. This is just perfect summer in a soup all year long. Then here are our chips. This with the spicy lime chip sauce, uh, spicy lime seasoning. This with the everything but the bagel seasoning. Um, these are my favorites because I just love them. Again, if you had chosen to make your chips by peeling them first, they wouldn't shrink up so much, but we don't care. The skin is where a lot of the nutrition is too. So these are yummy. Crunchy, awesome. I love those things. I can eat on those all summer long. And for these, I would just store in an airtight container that's very small. You don't want a lot of extra air and uh, they will last you until you finish them, which is probably gonna be tomorrow. Okay, our last thing is just the same uh, shredded zucchini that I did, not shredded, but the minced zucchini, that's what I'm gonna call it, the stuff that I just did in the blender, I mean, in the food processor, on, uh, on in the, in the kasori. So this is awesome for making powder, throwing it into a soup or stew or casserole just to have some added bulk of something that you want. You could throw these into a smoothie. Honestly, you could, um, because they're perfect. They, they have um, a neutral enough flavor that if you put it in with other stuff, it just added greens to it that will help bulk up the nutrition. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make some powder. Okay, what I have in this bowl are my shreds and my um, minced zucchini um, that I did. I'm just doing it all so I can show you the powder. And I'm just gonna empty this into a bowl. I didn't measure out exactly how much I had to start with because, you know, I just keep this in a jar going and take out what I need when. And this is not the finest grind. I can do it a little more. Uh, but that gave me about, I don't know, about half a cup of flour right there. Um, so how would I store this? I have a clean little pint jar right here. And... Oops, I found some more. Sometimes when you are doing that, I put the wrong lid on everything, I wonder. 
Um, when you were doing this and you find that you can't get some things, <laughs> can you imagine if I had ground that? Um, when you want to add a little bit more, sorry, when you find that you have some that's not grinding well, uh, or you're going to do more of a grind, you can always add a little bit of the powder that's in there. It actually does help facilitate um, the movement of product in the beginning when it's trying to do that first pulse grind to have a little extra powder in there to help. All right, here we go again. Much better. You can see that's a finer grind in there. All right. So this is going into our jar. And typically I would tell you that you should recondition this powder. Uh, and whether you mean by recondition, um, you would dry it again. Basically that's all you're doing to try to protect your powder. So I would put this on a cookie sheet in my oven that's been warmed to its lower temperature, turned off and allowed this to dry. Or I would put it in a muffin tin, not a muffin tin, a muffin paper or cupcake paper or coffee filter or a shallow dish back into my dehydrator to allow it to dry. But for right now, I'm going to let it cool off a little bit in my jar. And it's already gotten cool already. And um, because I'm going to be using it immediately, I'm not going to worry about that conditioning phase. So, but if you were storing, that's exactly what I would do to make sure that all of the powder inside is uh, dried off completely before you store it because any little bit of moisture that's in here um, is likely to cause some um, clumping and you don't want clumping in your powders. Okay, so we have our completed diced zucchini chips right here. Well, chunks right here. These are the dices that I dried. Uh, and then what I did was I wanted to show you how to rehydrate them. This is what I do, especially if I can plan ahead of time. I will put a uh, my vegetables into a jar. I will cover it completely with water so that everything is submerged in water before I put it in the refrigerator overnight. The next morning when I wake up, this is what it looks like. It is completely rehydrated. Now it does not come back to what it looked like when it was um, when it was fresh, because you've broken some of the fibers down and the structure of the um, zucchini in the drying process. But this will easily just now be thrown into a super stew uh, or anything that you're working with like that to um, to cook along with every every other vegetable. If you need to, then you can, when you take this out and it's too wet, like if you want to put it into a casserole, but you don't want all of the water that's in it, you can wring this out a little bit and just let it drain. Um, but I just wanted to let you see what it looked like when it was rehydrated. Again, this was just sitting overnight in the fridge. It's been in there for about eight hours. This It works the same way with the shreds. Just put them in some water, let them have time to rehydrate, um, wring them out in a tea towel to take the excess moisture out because they will absorb a lot of moisture that you don't want. Um, and use them as you would when they were fresh. So if you're interested in learning more dehydrating, I've got a video right here that you need to watch. And until I see you again next time, happy dehydrating. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. I'd love to answer them for you.